You know, the world is doing what it periodically does. It's changing. And this change that we're experiencing right now is a big one. Trust me, I'm old and I've seen a lot. And it's a change that's going to require us not to just draft off the work of our predecessors, but in fact to create a new. Now, if I talk about this world, here are the attributes that I see. It's a world of ubiquitous technology, where every technology is available to everyone, and the one that can put it to clever use faster is the one who's going to win. It's a world of near-perfect digital connectedness, where the constraints of geography and organizational boundaries almost don't matter, where the cost to movement is almost zero. And what it does is it changes the aspiration of our adversaries and our competitors and our partners alike. It changes what the world knows and how quickly it knows it. And it's a world of data abundance. Now, if you're in my business, the intelligence business, data abundance can be either boon or bane. Boon because of the potential to know more, to see more, gives us the potential to understand more and inform more and have a better chance of knowing what the truth is. It can also be bane because if you're overwhelmed by it, you either look at less of, it than, less of it than is available to you, or worse, you're living in a world where noise can look like data. Now, if you're in the business of national security, that world I've just described is one in which we must thrive. That world in which, that I just described is one that we need to seek the truth so we can provide clarity and wisdom and insight so that our leaders can make decisions both that have advantage and that are also wise. Now, how come I'm not daunted? How come I'm not crying on stage? <laughs> You're like, I don't know, Sue. My God, that seems awful to me. Um, but the, but the truth is, in 2013, the intelligence community made a decision in order to invest in a modern information technology environment for the community. We did that because we were seeking efficiency, but also to hedge our bets against this thing that we then called big data. And one of the best decisions that we made and that's a decision that I think will stand as one of those that caused the greatest leap forward, was when we decided to go with elastic cloud computing and to contract with a commercial vendor so that we didn't do something that we held just for ourselves, but something that when we used it for ourselves, we would advance the overall capacity. I would say for the first three years of our experience, here's what we did. First, we had to get access to the cloud. Then we needed to get organizational commitment. And I don't mean just by C CIOs, I meant by CEOs, by the people that did the mission, to understand that it wasn't just about the information technology, but rather what you could do with it. Because without the organizational commitment, we wouldn't put pressure on it. Because see, that's what our organizational commitment does to things. It makes you have to achieve. We learned a lot about moving data into the cloud and moving applications. We learned a lot about legacy infrastructures and not everything should be moved. We learned a ton about architecture. And we began, began to learn about the use of data, not just the presence of data. Now, here we are. I step into this job two and a half or so years later. And the coolest thing about that investment by my predecessors in the existence of elastic computing in an information technology environment that was supported with security and with procurement and with other kinds of compute and desktop capability. I walk in and now we're ready to go and we're able to use it. So let me tell you briefly what we've done 
over the last three years. We're faster. We can ask more questions, and the cost of asking those questions costs, is almost nothing. We take on much more complex problems than we did before. We are multidisciplinary and multi-organizational because we are allowed to have the same foundation. And that journey we started on data, we've actually figured out that when you have to understand the use of data, it completely changes your mindset in terms of how you not only need to put data in, but how you move data amongst application and by mission use. We've tackled some of our toughest community problems at speed, at cost, because why? We exist in a computer environment that allows us to. And we've developed business processes that aren't as vexing for our individuals, so the cost of integration to them is almost nothing. But as I sit here in 2019 and I'm living in the world that I described to you, the biggest new demand we have on ourselves right now is what are we going to do about using all that data? And the prospect of artificial intelligence and machine learning is one that is necessary for us in order to be able to harness the wisdom of the collective data and to free up the capability of my officers from manual tasks to creative tasks. We have published our artificial intelligence strategy. We call it augmenting intelligence with machines because I actually could care less about the technology. I care about the technology use. And we have four pillars of that. The first is really double down on the digital foundation and how we're going to use it. And again, because we made the investment in 2013, we had a head start on that digital foundation, but it's work that's never done. One of the things we learn is the government does not own the space of invention for these new capabilities, but what we need to be is fast followers. As quickly as governments or private sectors or universities identify something that can work for us, we need to be able to bring it into our environment. And then we need to be able to invest in those things that the private sector isn't going to do. And finally, we need to take care of some things that the government disproportionately cares about, and in our world, that's security. Now, how are we going to assure not only the integrity of the data, but the integrity of the algorithms and the integrity of the environment? The advances we've made in security are probably of what have allowed the greatest movement of mission. And I think it's one of the things that we, in our partnership, have gifted you. Because of our insistence in the confidence of our processes and our data, our commitment to the trust the American people place in us, we now have an environment that we trust. We trust more than our legacy systems. We trust with our most secure data and our secure processes. We are using the environment in order to move our security data into to be able to patch more effectively. And we are using it as a foundation for our cybersecurity infrastructure initiative that forces us, demands us, to know our networks, to secure our networks, and to be share, able to share what our networks individually know. But in my two minutes and 43 two, one, seconds remaining, I'm not going to let either me or you bask. Because we have work to do. It's still too, too hard to move across organizational boundaries. It's still too hard to get data available for use. It's still too hard to integrate applications. We're coming into a world, what we learned is that we thought we would be able to have just cloud. No, we need cloud. We need elastic cloud. We need commercial cloud. We need multiple security levels clouds.
But we need a hybrid architecture because some things are never going to move into the cloud. And we probably need a multiple cloud environment. And just when we thought we had this data foundation, the security thing right, we're going to have to rethink it as we have before to be able to adjust to not how humans want to use data and how you tag data and tag people for human use. We're now going to have to tag data and use it for machine use. And as you all come into this world, we're going to have to figure out how we connect. Because what's cool about the world I've described is those boundaries mean that the national security community intent is huge. It is not just within the intelligence agencies or just within the government. And so I think there is great room for us to explore. And lest I leave out the most important part, the biggest thing that we have to do is we have to share our demands for talent. I'm quite confident there is enough talent for all our use, but probably not enough talent for each of our use if we don't think about developing it together, moving people between the government and the private sector, thinking about what a career looks like in this field. It's a big old goofy world. Modern infrastructure for information can help. The investment we made so many years ago in order to be able to try and harness the power of the cloud with a partner who wanted to learn and grow with us has left us ready not only for today, but positioned for tomorrow. I tell you this because it was hard, and yet it's happened, and there's still work to do, so let's be up and doing. Thank you so much.